Hello, happy Friday. Welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gaman Singh. In our top story, a bomb threat was called into the 911 Emergency Call Center in St. Croix at approximately 10.20 a.m. on March 10th today, targeting the St. Croix Educational Complex High School. The school was immediately notified of the threat and evacuated. Department of Ed officials say the appropriate evacuation protocols were, were activated, directing students and staff to the UVI field and campus safely away from the high school. Emergency personnel and VIPD bomb squad units subsequently conducted a thorough search of the high school campus and no bomb or suspicious device was found. The campus was deemed safe for students to return at approximately 11.45 a.m. Classes resumed their regular schedules through the remainder of the school day. The department wishes to assure parents and the community that students remained safe and were accounted for at all times during the incident. The VIPD will continue its investigation into the threat. The Department of Education thanks the Educational Complex Administration, emergency personnel, and the VIPD for their swift response during this morning's incident. Officers blocked the east and west sides of the Queen Mary Highway, Centerline Road, leading to the UVI complex area in an effort to keep the area free from the flow of traffic. Count on two to keep you updated. On Thursday, March 9th, Central Dispatch transmitted via radio regarding, regarding shots being fired in the area of Altona and Wellgunst in the vicinity of Discount Water St. Thomas. Officers conducted an inspection in the vicinity of 178 Altona and discovered several shell casings. Here's more. Investigations continued during an inspection of the area. Officers discovered a gray Toyota Highlander parked in the area. During the inspection of the vehicle, two firearms were discovered, an AK-47 rifle and a 9mm Glock pistol, each contained loaded magazines on the ground of the front passenger side. Officers also discovered a magazine on the front passenger seat in plain view. Also on the same date, contact was made with Hector Castano Estrella Jr., the operator of the gray Toyota Highlander. Mr. Estrella was Mirandized, waived his rights, and gave a statement admitting to being involved in a shootout. He also admitted to being in possession of firearms found inside the vehicle he was operating. A 35-year-old Hector Castano Estrella has been charged with possession of an unlicensed firearm, illegal discharge of a firearm. Bail for Estrella was set at $25,000. In other news, on Thursday, March 9th, at about 12 p.m., a victim stated that while he was in the Hawk Hill area, his friend and a business partner was involved in an argument. He then explained that he stepped in to separate the two when his business partner took a knife from his pocket and cut him on the forearm. The business partner then fled the area immediately after. The victim was transported to the Schneider Hospital for treatment. Anyone having any information about any crimes, please contact Virgin Islands Police Department at 774-2211, Criminal Investigation Bureau 714-9807 or 9805. 340-714-9814. You can also contact Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-8477 or 911. Senator Gene Ford on Wednesday issued a statement expressing regret for stating that if he was being paid anything less than $85,000 annually, that he would not seek re-election because he was making much more before becoming a senator. In a recent town hall meeting on the island of St. Croix, he said, when I was asked whether I would take a $20,000 pay cut, I answered immediately and may have given the impression that I am insensitive to our economic plight. Senator Ford admitted this is the furthest thing from the truth and I regret having offended anyone or disappointed anyone with my statement. He said, in fact, I recognize that I am indeed a member of this community and will willingly share all necessary sacrifices that have to be made. Mr. Ford said that he will remain vigilant in advocating for higher salaries for teachers and will continue to fight for working people and retirees. He said, I would like to thank my fellow Virgin Islanders for their continuous support, including those who have expressed displeasure with my comments. He said, this job is one of great responsibility and I am honored to be in the position that I am in. I do not take my job lightly as my decisions and actions affect everyone in our community. During the town hall on Thursday, the audience had started to mumble when Mr. Ford revealed his stance on the salary matter. Well, today, uh, yesterday was the last day for voters to change political party and or cancellation of party enrollment, as well as the last day to investigate all questions relating to registration of electors. 
Thursday was also the last day for voter registration, the casting of lots, which determines the order in which candidates will appear on the ballot. That took place earlier this afternoon. Caroline Fox, who is the election supervisor, said the St. Thomas St. John Board will be meeting at 1.30 on Tuesday at the election system offices. Members will consider the approval of the official ballot for the special election. Court records indicate, as we mentioned, that Kevin Rodriguez filed an appeal Wednesday to have his case heard before the third U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals. Count on two to keep you updated. A U.S. oversight board rejected Puerto Rico Governor Ricardo Rosello's initial plan for pulling the island out of its debt crisis, saying the proposal relies on overly optimistic projections and fails to cut spending deeply enough to erase the government's chronic budget deficits. The panel's comments, made in a letter to Governor Thursday, raised the specter of a clash between the elected leader and the federal appointees who were given vast power over the U.S. territory's finances after a record-setting series of bond defaults. The blueprint released by Rosello bucked the deep austerity initially suggested by the board, relying instead largely on tax and cost-saving measures that wouldn't deal as a big blow to the already shrinking economy. Well, President Trump's full month on the job came as the U.S. economy added 235,000 new jobs. The Labor Department says that uh, February job growth pushed the unemployment rate down to 4.7 percent, down from 4.8 percent the month before. But at the White House Friday, talk turned to getting another kind of job done, pushing the House Republicans' plan to replace Obamacare. Emily Schmidt is in Washington. We must act now to save Americans from the imploding Obamacare disaster. President Trump's meeting with key House Republicans began very much on script. This is the time we're going to get it done. No surprises in front of the cameras, complimenting the Obamacare replacement bill already approved by two committees in the House, portraying a perfectly healthy progression. Behind the scenes, however, there are symptoms prompting concerns. Are you open to moving up the Medicaid freeze date? That question, whether House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy thinks it's a good idea to move up a rollback of a Medicaid expansion from its current sunset in 2020 is important because of this answer. I think right now that would be very difficult to do. Republican leaders in Congress say pushing that sunset up to the end of 2017, potentially creating a gap in care, could be enough to make moderate members move against the bill. More conservative members want that early rollback, and CNN reports President Trump is now open to it as well. Republicans need to stay largely united to outnumber Democrats against the Obamacare repeal. It's really a cruel bill that the Republicans have put forth. The president renewed his commitment to our process and was very pleased with our work. The post-White House meeting message stuck with unity. House Republican leaders staying on script, hoping their bill stays on track. In Washington, I'm Emily Schmidt. Keeping our eye on the economy, let's take a look at the stock market watch at the New York Stock Exchange. According to the numbers there, we can see everything's up. The Dow 44, NASDAQ 22, and uh, S&P up at 7. Coming up on News 2, WAPA appears at the Senate. We'll have details and an update from WAPA. And uh, also a grand opening at Caribbean Cinemas. We'll have the highlights coming up next. Welcome back. The economy in the territory is in for another upset. In a legislative meeting held today, Virgin Islands Water and Power Authority exclaimed that they are strapped for cash and that creditors have lowered their bond rating, making it hard to borrow money to purchase much-needed operational items that are needed to continue generating energy for local consumers. Here's more.
The 32nd Legislature's Committee on Government Affairs, Veterans, Energy, and Environmental Protection met today at the Fritz Lewitz Legislative Conference Room on St. Croix. The Legislative Committee received testimony from Julio Reimer Sr., the Executive Director and CEO of the Virgin Islands Water and Power Authority. Reimer spoke about the peaking cost of electricity and the challenges that the authority is going through. Julio Reimer further stated that the authority filed for a base rate increase from the Public Service Commission because the entity was experiencing problems and lacked cash to pay for its operations. But the Public Service Commission that once gave a go to the authority rescinded in its decisions. The action by the PSC took as, as 20, January 26, 2016 meeting to rescind their interim base rates and its denial of the request to reconsider that decision has cast catastrophic consequences, not only to the authority's operation, but the welfare and safety of the public. Seemingly, Virgin Islands water and power consumers are the ones who may pay for the increasing cost of the authority's day-to-day -day operations. Two of the three credit rating agencies took immediate action to further downgrade WAPA's already dismal bond rating. The revocation of the interim base rate has dire consequences to every member of this community. If we are not able to obtain the financing to purchase our new generators, then we are left with less efficient, higher cost generation, two unstable power plants, and the prospect of a wave of rolling daily blackouts on St. Thomas. For News 2, I'm Stephanie Shalana Brown. WAP officials state that their bond rating lowered because creditors state that the authority has high outstanding government receivables, limited internal cash, and slow regulatory process. Also, uh, again, the Public Services Commission had hoped to make a final decision on permanent electric system base rates by May, but on Wednesday, PSC members were told that they might want to tack another six weeks onto the schedule currently being finalized by the hearing examiner. At a meeting on St. Thomas Georgetown Consulting Group, the PSC's advisors on VI Water and Power Authority Matters explained that a final schedule had not yet been set in the authority's ongoing base rate since the hearing examiner, attorney Bennett Chan, was still waiting on updated information from WAPA, including financials and updates on the purchase of new generators. Virgin Islands Fire Service wishes to inform the general public that the Tangle Company Fire Station, which is located in Estate Fortuna, is temporarily closed due to insufficient manpower. Normal operations will resume tomorrow at 8 a.m. The fire service personnel stationed at Tango Company have been reassigned to other fire stations throughout the St. Thomas St. John District and all 911 calls concerning emergencies in the Fortuna and Bordeaux areas will be rerouted to the Echo Company Fire Station. The management and staff of the fire service apologize for any inconvenience that this temporary closure may cause. In other news, three new Zika cases confirmed this week. The VI Health Department reported also the number of confirmed seven cases among pregnant women increased by two. The confirmation raised the total number of positive cases to 992 since January 2016. According to the department, one new Zika case was reported on St. Thomas, two on St. Croix. Of the total number of cases, 652 have been reported among women, while 332 have been among men. Well, just a quick note for our viewers, next week, Thursday, March 16th and Friday, March 17th, regularly scheduled programs will be preempted on CBS US, USVI due to the coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament. Programming will be preempted from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m., then 7 p.m. to 12 a.m. News 2 will be preempted on both days, again, March 16th and 17th. Also, NCAA Games will also be hosted the subsequent